Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's so nice to see you all. So welcome to this introduction to the traditional Martinist order. We're going to be discussing some of our experiences as Martinists and as members of Heptads. And in a moment, I'll be uh, introducing two members who are uh, longtime Martinist members, Julian Johnson and Michael Shaluli. So they'll be speaking in a few moments. And each of us is going to present a little bit about our experience as Martinists, and then again, as our uh, uh, about our experience in a local heptad. So I had the very good fortune to join the Martinist order early in uh, my association with the Rosicrucian order. As you may know, the Rosicrucian order is a larger organization and helps with the administration and taking care of the traditional Martinist order. So I was a new Rosicrucian and um, I was so excited to hear about this tradition that studied the mysticism of um, Judaism and Christianity, including subjects like Kabbalah and mystical symbols and dreams and prayer. And I set up my home oratory, which is the, like a Rosicrucian sanctum, it's the place where we do our mystical work. And I just was so touched by the Martinist teachings to find a way to really focus on prayer and meditation really made a, a significant impact on me. I remember early in the Martinist lessons reading that Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin, who is the philosopher uh, upon which the Martinist philosophy is is uh, inspired by, I remember reading that he said that we should have only one goal in our life, and that goal is union with the divine. And I saw unfolding in all of the Martinist lessons different ways to approach that, ways that we could practice different prayers and meditations. and. Then I had the opportunity to participate in a local heptad. And for me, this was a really important experience. As you may know, Martinist study our lessons in a heptad over a two year period. So the associate degree takes two years, then the initiate degree takes two years, and then the SI degree takes two years. So we're with the same fellow Martinist students and the same officers and teachers for six years. And I so appreciated the bond that I felt with these other members. We would go into the temple and discuss what was in the lessons. We would practice the meditations together, the exercises, and this really created a strong bond with my fellow Martinist members. So this was something that encouraged me to become very involved. I was, I served as an officer in the local Heptad and it's really a way to experience the Martinist teachings on another level. When I was in the Heptad temple, it's like walking through the lessons. And we, perf we, we studied the exact same lessons that Martinists study at home, but it's really a powerful experience to discuss and practice the exercises together. So I really appreciated the opportunity to be in a Heptad. Also, I mentioned the rituals. The Martinist temples are just beautiful and their symbolism throughout. And 
I found that this touched me on other levels, that these symbols were speaking to different levels of my awareness. So I always felt very fortunate to be able to participate in a local heptad, as well as to study my lessons in my home oratory. So now I'd like to call on Julian Johnson to share some of his experiences. Uh, thanks, uh, Grandmaster. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I think uh, everything is working. Um, uh, like, like the Grandmaster, I was very fortunate to, uh, relatively early in my experience to, uh, in my Rosicrucian journey to to join the Martinist Order, I was a couple of years into the order, and uh, I, I'm going to kind of fast forward for a moment, then kind of go back a little bit into my own detail and experience. I want to tell you something quite I find quite interesting. So, as, as you know, if you look at the history of the, the Martinist Order and relationship to the Rosicrucian Order, Amarok, uh, as I recall, it's 1939 that the uh, traditional modernist sort of came under the jurisdiction of AMARC, right? And the aim was, to, I think, to protect it, seeing what was happening in Europe with World War II approaching. And for, you know, many years, it kind of uh, 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 was not not a huge uh, set of activities uh, here in the United States. It was, it was large in France, from my understanding, but it wasn't much. Uh, you had for uh, very few heptads in the country. And by the time I joined the Martinist Order, uh, which was actually in the 70s, uh, you had the Grand Temple Heptad in San Jose, and you had the New York Heptad. And I'm from New York and had the fortune of joining the New York Heptad. What was quite interesting to me uh, years later, and I will go back and, and, and put more flesh around this, but in, a, in about the kind of mid to late 80s, uh, uh, the Martinist activity began to expand in the United States. And partly what drove it to, uh, you know, I'm going to say, according to uh, some of the folks who were serving as officers uh, in, in the Grand Lodge at the time, was there was a recognition or, or an observation, I should call it, that some of the strongest Rosicrucians were also Martinist. Right. So that that really then fueled uh, the expansion of Martinist activity in the United States. Now, you know, in France, it had been going on and with a great deal of, uh, of, of I guess, fervor, but that really fueled the growth of the order in the, in the orders, the Rosicrucian orders uh, efforts behind exposing and encouraging members to join the Martinist order. Uh, because very often, again, it just did something. And I think when I look at my own self, it, it kind of catalyzed my growth in many ways. Uh, it is, uh, you know, such a rich experience. And as uh, the Grandmaster pointed out, uh, there are uh, many symbols involved and things of this nature uh, that really do touch us. And, and you will hear very often referred to the Martinist order is referred to very often as, as the way of the heart. So in a certain way, uh, it, is, it is very, a certain way, it's, it's very accessible in a certain way to us. It touches us kind of, you know, in the heart. Uh, and that, uh, I would say, is something that we're able to grab a hold of and 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 build upon uh, very much so. Uh, what's fascinating also is that Marnism presents things that one encounters in Rosicrucianism, but from a different angle, so to speak. And, and the Grandmaster referred to the Kabbalah. Uh, I've been, I still refer so many times to some of the insights that were conveyed to me through the Marnist teachings that you know have to do with life and existence. I, uh, and the, the insights are, are there in a profound, they're in a different kind of language of, uh, but, uh, but nevertheless simple, but, but profound. So there's a, a deepening of understanding that you can get about your human experience as a Rosicrucian and living in life and as ev an evolving student, right? Uh, also something that's, I think, very true is that uh, Rosicrucianism is comprehensive, right? It's, it's mysticism, it's parapsychology, it's health, it's science, it's physics. It is comprehensive, right? Uh, and obviously, it's a long year, many, many years of study of the Rosicrucian teachings, you know, in reality, decades. Uh, Martinism is kind of just kind of that mysticism part, right? It kind of right down this heart. It takes the Jewish Kabbalah and elements of it, right? But the mysticism is kind of the focus. So you would find... Uh, 
in this work. And as, as the grandmaster pointed out, you're looking the only, in the words of Samatan, uh, the only initiation I seek, and I'm going to paraphrase because I never remembered exactly, but I found it the most profound thing uh, that I've you know taken away. Uh, but the only initiation I seek is where I enter into God's heart and God's heart enters into mine. And the only way I know of doing that is to go deeper and deeper into my innermost being, right? To bring forth the living root, et cetera. It is, uh, so that, that uh, turning within uh, is such much the heart of it. Uh, and that's mysticism there. So it kind of, again, complements uh, our work because at the end of the day, we know at the heart of Rosicrucianism is mysticism, right? It's that contact and that realization, uh, the greater and greater realization we can have with the divine. So, uh, you know, uh, I would say my experience attending a heptad, I would put it this this way to you. You know, it's, it's in my absurd kind of language perhaps, but I used to say, I'd be willing to come back as a chair to just be in the heptad, the vibrations of that temple when you're doing this work, and you know, and 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 it's, it's much more ritualistic in many ways than you know the Rosicrucian convocation in some ways, right? But when you're doing that work and the intensity that the officers bring to that work, uh, you know, it creates an atmosphere uh, that is very palpable. And I say, you know, I was like, I just if I could be a chair, I'd be I'd have been good. So anyway, that would be what how I would recommend it to you. There's lots more that I'm sure everyone could say and, and I could maybe add, but uh, let me leave it there as I turn it over to uh, my brother, uh, Michael Shalouli. Thank you, Julian, and thank you, Grandmaster Julie. Uh, all of us, I think, who are members of the Martinist Order have very unique experiences with it. My journey into the Martinist order took a little different path. I was a very strong Rosicrucian student, and I had joined the lodge in our area, St. Petersburg, Aquarian. It was actually Aquarian chapter, and then it became a lodge soon after I joined in 1983. And a number of us were young. Yes, we were young back then, 1983. And uh, Sometimes peer pressure actually has an effect on us, even as a mystic. So a number of my friends who were around my age had joined the Martinist order, and I felt, ah, Martinist, that's something I need to do as well. And so I joined, and I went through the initiation, which is quite an experience, one that I will never forget, and one that I think anyone who has gone through that initiation would recommend to any mystical student. Uh, it was very uplifting and very inspiring. However, as I went through the very beginnings of the Martinist teachings, uh, I felt it wasn't quite for me at that time. And uh, I recognized that I had let peer pressure kind of get me into it. There was an element to it that was very special that I still felt, but I felt I had to step back, and I did. Over time, certain words, certain phrases, and certain feelings would come to me, and I had no way of explaining them. And so I went on a journey to find out what are these words, these phrases, these, these inspirations, that are, where are they coming from? And I actually found them in my home monographs from the traditional Martinist order. And it was at that time that I recognized that that was the way of the heart speaking to me. My heart was opening up to what the traditional Martinist order was giving. And I actually understood that the way of the heart was real. And so I once again started going to the heptad. And as our Grand Master stated, this is, this is no simple task. It takes two years to go through each of the degrees. So it's a six-year process, but I was very happy to do it. And when you're in a heptad, it is actually quite a marvelous thing. You're with members that are with you for those six years. You're experiencing things. You get an opportunity to try to 
speak about very high mystical principles. And speaking about the unreal is sometimes very difficult. But doing that, actually finding words to try to convey a mystical principle in its own way is a very revealing process to the heart. You begin to understand that mystical thread that weaves its way throughout all of existence. And the Martinist teachings are just that. Some say it's Christian mysticism. When we say that, uh, we need to think of maybe Christ consciousness rather than any religious connotation. It's a way for all of us to begin that path towards um, illumination. That's what Christ consciousness is all about. Uh, and the Martinist teachings and the Martinist way of actually going to the heptads and ateliers. The ateliers now are, are very marvelous. They have, um, it's, it's a smaller group. So the heptad has seven officers and atelier has three. Uh, but all of them uh, go through the same teachings and reveal the same uh, pathway to the students. But you get a chance to actually work with that, to work with the other members, to listen to viewpoints that perhaps you never really thought about and kind of reconcile those. And uh, there's social periods where you can further talk about some of the things you experienced in the meetings. Uh, so it is such a wonderful supplement to the Rosicrucian work. Julian laid that out very beautifully. The Rosicrucian order is uh, sort of all-encompassing. Uh, there's, there's something for everyone. There's a, a Rosicrucian International Research Council that looks at the scientific methods and scientific disciplines that are out there and how that relates to mysticism, whereas the Martinist order really focuses on that mystical thread that exists in every human being, in consciousness itself. So uh, it is certainly a wonderful path and uh, one that I think anyone who has been on that path would recommend to any Rosicrucian student. Um, it is just a marvelous way of revealing the way of the heart. So with that, I would uh, send it back to our Grandmaster Julie. I'm gonna share a prayer from Louis Claude de Saint Martin. Take back my will, O Lord, take back my will. For if I can suspend it one instant before you, the torrents of your life and light, having nothing to resist them, shall pour impetuously within me. Help me to break down the woeful barriers which divide me from you. Arm me against myself. Triumph within me over all your enemies and mine by subduing my will. O oh, eternal principle of all joy and of all truth. When shall I be so renewed as to no longer be conscious of self, save in the permanent affection of your exclusive and vivifying will? When shall every kind of privation appear to me a profit and advantage by preserving me from all bondage and leaving me ample means to bind myself to the freedom of your spirit and wisdom.
Thank you all so much. Good evening.